<laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants is an American animated comedy TV series showing the adventures of SpongeBob and his marine friends in the city of Bikini Bottom. The nasty patty. <laughs> As a dedicated fan, you might think you know everything about the characters and the show, but do you really? From Pearl's mother to global warming, here are 20 SpongeBob secrets Nickelodeon was hiding. Number 20. The Krabby Patty Secret Formula. The Krabby Patty secret formula was a source of frustration for many viewers. It formed the main plot of many episodes when Plankton came up with some exciting and downright diabolical ideas to steal the secret recipe and become as successful as Mr. Krabs with his restaurant. We know that Plankton never did get his hands on the secret formula, but why couldn't we? After all, we were mere viewers and should have been in on it. Well, some viewers didn't take being in the dark lying down. They went through many episodes to piece together Together, the actual recipe and the possible ingredients might just surprise you. Some sources report that the Krabby Patty has two buns, lettuce, cheese, tomatoes, mayonnaise, tartar sauce, flour, turmeric, a patty, mustard, ketchup, sea salt, land salt, onions, and barnacle shavings. The secret formula is also on the list and we obviously don't know what it's made of, but the answer might be in front of us. Many viewers speculate that the secret formula is nothing at all. They think that Mr. Krabs invented a supposed secret formula to prevent Plankton from putting his time and effort into making his restaurant, The Chum Bucket, a success. After all, when Patrick was left in charge of the slogan for The Chum Bucket, it had more customers than the Krusty Krab. Although, if you Google the secret recipe, King Neptune's Poseidon Powder comes up as an answer, so that's also a possibility. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Plankton has no friends. There are billions and billions of phytoplankton in the world. In fact, there's more phytoplankton than stars in the sky. And yet, Plankton from SpongeBob SquarePants doesn't have a single friend. You can't help but feel sorry for the little guy. Throughout countless episodes, you'll see other residents of Bikini Bottom being able to enjoy delicious food from the Krusty Krab, but Plankton is never allowed. He's so intent on stealing the recipe that Mr. Krabs and Krusty Krab employees never let him purchase one. And every time he's unsuccessful in his attempt to get a Krabby Patty, he has to return to his lonely chum bucket restaurant and home. A home that always seems so incredibly lonely. I'm exhausted. Why don't you go make yourself useful and synthesize me up some grub? He also gets stepped on countlessly for being so small, and he's even bullied for his full name, Sheldon J. Plankton. Plankton's only true companion in his entire life isn't even a real creature. It's his computer wife, Karen. He supposedly met Karen when she was a calculator, and they grew up together, fell in love, and got married. But I'm pretty sure even she gets tired of Plankton's antics, especially as when he's not busy trying to steal a Krabby Patty, he's in jail. Number 18. Pearl's Mother a lot of plot lines in SpongeBob SquarePants don't make sense. I mean, they light fires underwater, and a starfish is best friends with a sea sponge. But perhaps the most confusing storyline is the one surrounding Eugene Krabs and his daughter, Pearl. Mr. Krabs is a crab, and Pearl is, well, a whale. I'm no expert, but I'm pretty sure whales and crabs can't do the dirty. And we also know that Mr. Krabs loves money, so it's not like he'd volunteer to spend money on someone other than himself if he could avoid it. But many viewers seem to think that Mr. Krabs actually saved Pearl's life. He had seen her mother killed with a harpoon, and baby Pearl was hiding by her body. This would make sense, given his fear of hooks. In one episode, Patrick and SpongeBob are seen playing with fishing hooks, and Mr. Krabs says he would never go near them. He has both fear and respect for the hooks after what he saw with Pearl's mother, and he's willing to make financial sacrifices for her since he couldn't save her mother. But what of her name? 
Pearl. Well, it's clear that Mr. Krabs loves Pearl when you see what the Krusty Krab sign is made of. Clam Shells Pearls come from shells, and while pearls are worth a lot of money, his daughter, Pearl, is priceless. Number 17. Mr. Krabs is a Serial Killer have we ever looked at all the episodes involving Mr. Krabs as a whole and wondered whether the money-hungry crustacean could be a serial killer? I mean, I wouldn't rule it out. First of all, we don't 100% know what happened to Pearl's mother. We have theories, like being killed with a harpoon, but who's to say that Mr. Krabs didn't kill her? We also know that he has no regard for the safety of children since he made that dangerous amusement park called Krabby Land. Some viewers believe that crab meat makes up the secret formula of the Krabby Patty. I mean, we haven't seen any other crabs in the show apart from his mother, have we? Others speculate that whale meat is the secret ingredient, but surely Pearl would have been long gone if that were the case. Each and every one of you a free Krabby Patty! But we do gain insight into how ruthless he is when Mr. Krabs thinks a health inspector is a con artist and makes SpongeBob create a tainted Krabby Patty. When he chokes on a fly and collapses, Mr. Krabs arranges to have his body disposed of rather than calling for help. Oh, and can we forget the time he tried to kill Squidward? He thought Squidward's art would be worth more if Squidward were dead, so his goal was to kill him. He starts by sending him on dangerous missions that would surely see him die, but then tries to beat him with a mallet. Number 16. Bikini Bottom is based on a real-life nuclear weapons testing site. Bikini Bottom seems like a made-up city in the ocean that was the brainchild of the TV show's creators, a fun, childlike city with fun little cartoon sea critters going about their daily lives. But it has much darker origins. Bikini Bottom is actually based on a real place in the Pacific Ocean called Bikini Atoll, which was where nearly two dozen nuclear weapons were tested during the Cold War. Bikini is a group of islands within the Marshall Islands, a former United States colony. After World War II, the United Nations made the United States the governing body of a large northern Pacific area, including the Marshall Islands. They then used Bikini and another location, Anoetic, for testing and developing nuclear weapons between 1946 and 1958. They detonated more than 60 weapons on these islands. But what about the occupants? Well, the government relocated 167 people living on Bikini to Rongerik, east of Bikini. Here, they had inadequate food crops and experienced starvation. Due to radiation contamination, it'll be thousands of years before they can return home. Look closely at each SpongeBob SquarePants episode, and you might might see a few elements of the real bikini. Number 15. The characters represent the seven deadly sins. There are seven main characters in SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob himself, Plankton, Mr. Krabs, Gary the Snail, Sandy, Squidward, and Patrick Star. If you've been watching SpongeBob SquarePants for a number of years, you might have heard the rumor about each of those seven characters representing the seven deadly sins. Honestly, it makes complete sense. <laughs> The most obvious one is, of course, greed, and Mr. Krabs fits that title to a T. He loves nothing more than making money and is incredibly greedy in how he makes, saves, and spends it. Then there's Patrick, who fits the deadly sin of sloth, which is excessive laziness. You don't see Patrick doing very much at all. Plankton represents envy, as he's envious of Mr. Krabs and his Krusty Krab secret formula. He does everything he can possibly think of to get it. Even Gary the Snail is represented in the seven deadly sins. All we see is him eating, so he's gluttony. He's definitely lust. He has a tremendous amount of love for his friends, even friends who don't want to be SpongeBob's friends, like Squidward. Number 14. Squidward is SpongeBob's guardian. Many viewers have often been left wondering why Squidward still lives next door to SpongeBob, even though everything about the Yellow Sea Sponge seems to annoy him greatly. Sure, he did move away to Squidville, but it wasn't long until he was back in Bikini Bottom. But at the very least, surely he could just move to another house so he didn't have to live next door to SpongeBob. Well, he might not be able to, because some viewers theorize that SpongeBob's parents paid him to look after SpongeBob. Don't be silly, we've just begun. <laughs>
We all know that Squidward is a classically trained clarinet player and seemed to have been a member of high society at some point. This was made obvious when we learned that Squidward had gone to school with Squilliam Fancy Son. But after a failed clarinet performance, Squidward crashed and burned, and Squidward might have been left to start again. It's been theorized that SpongeBob's parents helped Squidward get back on track in exchange for quite a big favor. They wanted Squidward to look after their son, SpongeBob. It's believed that SpongeBob's parents bought his house and let him enjoy a life of freedom, but only under the watchful eye of Squidward. Number 13. It's about global warming. SpongeBob SquarePants could just be an innocent TV show about a sea sponge that lives in a pineapple under the sea. But could it actually also be about global warming? Some viewers seem to think so. Many people seem to think that because SpongeBob looks like an ordinary kitchen sponge rather than a sea sponge, he represents waste and pollution that ultimately ends up in the ocean. It's not really a far-fetched theory, since there are about 5.25 trillion pieces of trash in the sea. Then there's Mr. Krabs, who only seems to care about money. Some people theorize that he represents large corporations responsible for pollution and harm who only care about making money. Even Patrick Starr might stand for something bigger. Some viewers think that his living under a rock could stand for the general public that doesn't pay attention to what's happening around them. Then there's Squidward, who stands for liberalism. He's passionate about music, art, and culture, but his friends and acquaintances ignore his interests and he's forced to work for a big corporation. You might even see a message hidden in Sandy Cheeks. She is undoubtedly intelligent and has lots of advanced technology, but she's portrayed as what some people say are stereotypical Texans, too interested in violence and living a lifestyle that's only beneficial to her and no one else. Number 12. Crabby Patties Are Made From Crabs You wouldn't believe it, but people actually get into heated debates online, particularly on Reddit, about the contents of a Krabby Patty. It looks like a meat patty, but when was the last time you saw farmers grazing cattle at the bottom of the ocean? Try never. So could there be some truth in the idea that Krabby Patties contain crab? I mean, it's in the name, and it might also explain why Mr. Krabs is the only permanent crab character apart from the odd visit by his mother. Crabs are abundant in the ocean, but not in Bikini Bottom. It's a bit fishy, don't you think? Some people also find it suspicious that Mr. Krabs tries so hard to keep the secret formula away from Plankton. Will he discover something that could destroy his entire business? Or is it purely to ensure the Chum Bucket doesn't become his competition? The nasty patty. <laughs> you might even recall a special Halloween episode in which Plankton turned the chum bucket into the Krusty Krab and said that Krabby Patties contain fish meat. That would mean customers are eating fish, which would be cannibalism. Many viewers were eager to remind people that it is just a cartoon and they were probably just beef patties, but we might never know for sure. Number 11. The main characters are addicted to drugs. We've already wondered if the seven main characters represent the seven deadly sins, but could they also represent seven different drugs? I mean, possibly, but it is a kid's TV show, so I highly doubt it. But if we could just ponder the idea for a moment, you might see that the concept does make a little bit of sense in an exaggerated war on drugs kind of way. SpongeBob has an incredible imagination to the point where it's almost like he's on magic mushrooms. I mean, who's to say he's not on shrooms? Then there's Mr. Krabs and Mrs. Puff, both of which viewers speculate are on cocaine. Side effects of this drug are irritation and paranoia, and both display these often. Mr. Krabs is always irritated when it comes to money, and Mrs. Puff is always irritated when it comes to dealing with SpongeBob. Mrs. Puff also always has PTSD-like reactions to SpongeBob driving, which could be signs of tweaking. Tweaking is a form of paranoia associated with cocaine use and withdrawal. Mr. Krabs also displays paranoia when Plankton tries to steal his secret formula, but to be fair, he is always trying to steal it. And when you look at Squidward's behaviors, like avoiding eye contact, poor work performance, deception, and mood swings, you might think he's on heroin. Patrick's laziness, passion for food, and slow speaking might make you assume he's a huge fan of marijuana. The only character who appears to be clean is Sandy. 
Number 10. SpongeBob is a veteran with PTSD. Before SpongeBob was seemingly dumbed down in some of the later episodes, many viewers speculated that he could have been a war veteran with PTSD sent home to start living life to the fullest. To be fair, it's a bit of a stretch, but some of the things he does do make sense. For example, he has a very regular morning routine which often involves him waking up at the same time each morning to his giant horn alarm. This regular routine and even the type of alarm would be expected in the military. <laughs> The person who came up with this theory also suggested that as he wears the same clothes every day, it's a bit like a soldier having a uniform. But then that would be the case for pretty much all cartoon characters. They all wear the same clothing, like in The Simpsons or Family Guy, for example. But then pay attention to how he responds to authority figures. SpongeBob talks as if he's always answering to his superior. When he applied for the job of fry cook at the Krusty Krab, he said, Permission to come aboard, Captain? SpongeBob is also obsessed with karate, so could he possibly be trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat? I mean, anything is possible. Number 9. The show is a metaphor for World War II Germany. Most people would think you have way too much time on your hands if you thought SpongeBob SquarePants was a metaphor for World War II Germany. But shouldn't we at least hear the viewer out? Someone by the name of Dog Team 232 posted a theory on Reddit about how SpongeBob SquarePants truly is a metaphor for World War II Germany, with each character representing a different portion of the war. They said that Mr. Krabs represented capitalism in all ways, with his love for money and low salary for those working for him. His daughter Pearl is the living symbol of greed. SpongeBob allegedly represents the Third Reich and their belief in having a pure Aryan race. He has blue eyes and blonde hair. Well, he's a sponge, so you know, I wouldn't really say he has blonde hair. Squidward is a representation of upper-class Europe because he always thinks he's better than everyone else and is pretty fancy. Although he could also be interpreted as the Jewish people persecuted by the Germans, which might explain why SpongeBob continually pesters him. And what about Plankton? Well, he's Mr. Krabs' arch nemesis. If Mr. Krabs represents capitalism, Plankton could be Soviet Russia communism. They, too, hate capitalism. Plankton stealing the secret formula could be a metaphor for Russia trying to sabotage American society. Honestly, this theory is a rabbit hole. Number 8. SpongeBob and Squidward's homes are remnants of a tiki bar. SpongeBob SquarePants characters live in some pretty unique homes. Squidward lives in a stone head, SpongeBob lives in a pineapple, and Patrick lives under a rock. But pay particular attention to SpongeBob and Squidward's homes, and you might think they look eerily similar to what you'd find at a tiki bar. Tiki bars have paper lanterns, faux flowers, stone tiki heads, coconuts, pineapples, and flaming cocktails. Some people on Reddit theorized that a ship with a tiki bar on board sank, and its decorations and structures ended up on the bottom of the ocean. SpongeBob and Squidward then claimed them as their homes. It's a pretty far-off theory, but there have been a couple of tiki-like episodes, so maybe Nickelodeon was trying to tell us something. Number 7. Squidward and Squilliam are bitter ex-boyfriends. Has anyone ever thought about Squidward and Squilliam's unusual relationship? One Redditor by the name of Please Don't Ask for Picks wondered whether the pair might have been lovers. Sure would explain a lot. What we know immediately is that Squidward and Squilliam met in high school, were in the same band class, and always wanted to impress each other. The first real introduction to Squilliam's character is when he phones Squidward to taunt him about not having a band. Squidward's character is very much based on not caring what other people think and being quite apathetic. But when he's on the phone with Squilliam, he's frantic, stuttering, lying to impress him, and seems very self-conscious. Squilliam also taunts Squidward by saying he's living Squidward's dreams, so they must have been close enough at one point for Squilliam to know what Squidward's dreams were. Then there's the way he speaks to him and touches him. Squilliam calls Squidward Squiddy and pinches his cheek. I don't know about you, but there seems to be way more between those two than meets the eye, and I'm not surprised that Redditors think the same thing. Number 6. 
Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are Navy Divers Every town needs a hero, and in the case of Bikini Bottom, they have two, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. They are superheroes of the deep, but what's their story? Of course, we'll never know what Nickelodeon was thinking. Still, there's a possibility that Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are Navy divers and potentially relate to the actual Bikini Atoll used for nuclear weapons testing. Some viewers have long wondered why they are the only humans in Bikini Bottom. What are they doing there? Who are you calling Big Nose? Big Nose? <laughs> Well, some people theorize that they were a part of Bikini Atoll tests in the 1940s and 50s. Mermaid Man might have been a Navy diver in a mission that went wrong, and he was left undersea. Barnacle Boy, who is much younger than Mermaid Man, might have been in a similar situation in the 1950s. Both of them were left disgruntled, shaken, and irritated. Them being Navy divers isn't actually a far-off theory, because they seem to have a lot of Navy gear for two people who weren't in the Navy. So sit on that theory for a moment and let us know what you think. Number 5. Why SpongeBob and Patrick Act Like Children out of all seven main characters on SpongeBob SquarePants, Patrick and SpongeBob would have to be the most immature. They act like children, or even toddlers, which is probably why they get along so well. Compared to the other characters like Squidward, Sandy, and Mr. Krabs, they are undoubtedly much more youthful. But why are they more childish than the other characters? A standard theory is that their ability to clone themselves means they purposely stay young forever. Sponges reproduce by building buds and starfish can lose arms and grow more. Some viewers believe that every time SpongeBob and Patrick appear to age, they panic and clone themselves to stay young forever. Speaking of age, though, a 2011 study found that watching even just short amounts of SpongeBob SquarePants could dampen preschoolers' brain power. University of Virginia researchers wanted to see if fast-paced TV shows affected skills like attention, problem-solving, and memory, and put 64-year-old children into three groups. The first had to watch SpongeBob. The second would watch a slower school for preschool children, and the third would draw with crayons and markers for nine minutes. Out of all groups, those who watched nine minutes of the fast-paced SpongeBob SquarePants show scored the worst. Number 4. SpongeBob SquarePants Humor is Meant for Adults SpongeBob SquarePants has been a successful children's show for over 20 years. You won't find too many kids who don't love tuning in to watch the vibrant yellow sponge hang out with his squid, squirrel, crab, and snail mates. And while the show is undoubtedly for children, much of the humor is actually more directed toward adults. Sometimes you don't even realize this until you grow up. I mean, the opening scene of Season 7's The Plays The Thing episode is proof of that. You see SpongeBob blowing up a balloon. That's definitely no ordinary balloon. That's one for adults. But you wouldn't know that if you're a child. Then there was the time Gary the Snail caught SpongeBob watching something he shouldn't. He was transfixed on a frilly orange sea anemone dancing on the TV. But when Gary approached, he quickly changed the channel and told Gary he was simply looking for the sports channel. Most adults will know that he was caught watching a late night dirty movie. In another episode with Patrick, SpongeBob, and Sandy, SpongeBob said, That's it, Patrick, your genius is showing. But Patrick misheard what he said and covered his crotch before saying, Where? He thought SpongeBob said something entirely different. Number 3. Krabby Patties are laced with an addictive substance. Have you ever wondered why the residents of Bikini Bottom go absolutely wild for Krabby Patties? Surely burgers can't be that delicious that they pretty much visit the restaurant every day. Well, some people speculate that there might be something quite addictive in them, making people visit time and time again. 
When you search on Google for the secret formula of the Krabby Patty, you sometimes see mention of something called Poseidon powder. But when you look up Poseidon powder on Urban Dictionary, it has nothing to do with SpongeBob at all. It's another word for cocaine. So while some people speculate that Krabby Patties are nothing more than crab and fish meat, which is scandalous enough given that it would make them all cannibals, it could be much worse than that. Mr. Krabs might be lacing his food with cocaine to get his customers hooked. Number 2. Patrick Just Pretends To Be Stupid Both Patrick and SpongeBob aren't the brightest characters out of all the ones we see. They seem to get up to some crazy antics and aren't always making the wisest choices. Some viewers have noticed that they appear dumber as the years have passed, but some have also speculated that Patrick isn't as dumb as he makes himself out to be. Sure, he once nailed a piece of wood to himself and lives under a rock. He also doesn't appear to do much more than sleep, eat, and watch TV. But whenever he and SpongeBob end up in a bit of a pickle, it's typically Patrick that comes up with a genius solution. It's almost like he intentionally dumbs himself down because it's easier and only lets his intelligence shine through when it's important to get themselves out of a situation. Many Patrick fans do genuinely think that he's much more intelligent than he seems. Number 1. The Patties Are Vegan We've heard a whole bunch of theories about the patties within Krabby Patties. Some people believe they're made of beef, which is what they look like, while others think they contain fish, crab, imitation crab, and even whale meat. But could they actually be vegan? I mean, it would make sense. Just ask series animator Vincent Waller and you'll get the truth. He said there is no meat in the Krabby Patty and, in fact, no animal product at all. He said this was always something they had planned with the series creator, Steve. Hillenburg. According to official sources, a Krabby Patty is a veggie burger sold by the made-up restaurant Krusty Krab. But even if we know that the patties don't contain any meat, what do they contain? Well, there's actually a Wikipedia page for the Krabby Patty, which describes the burger as a frozen, meatless burger with buns, pickles, lettuce, tomatoes, cheese, mustard, ketchup, and onions. Then there's that all-important secret formula hidden in the patty vault. But maybe the vegan patties are just like the vegan patties we eat. Typically, these contain beans like soybeans, tofu, grains, nuts, fungi, and seeds. Some also include chickpeas, herbs, spices, and sweet corn. Basically, a vegan patty can be any number of natural ingredients. Even after 20 years of SpongeBob SquarePants, we truly are none the wiser. SpongeBob was an absolute cracker of a show. I mean, who didn't love coming home from school, dumping down their school bag, and throwing themselves on the sofa with a snack to watch a little yellow sea sponge wreak havoc in the ocean? But I bet you see the show in a new light now. Well played, Nickelodeon. Well played. What's your favorite SpongeBob episode? Uh, personally, I like the one where they start delivering it with the the crusty cray. <clears throat> My throat. <clears> throat> Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time. <clears throat> I gotta get some tea.